Hello everybody. Um, welcome back to my back porch. I wanted to give you an update on my uh, breast cancer surgery. It's been two weeks today since I was operated on. My surgery took five hours and they removed all the tissue from bro both breasts and also started reconstruction at that time. Uh, I've been having to go back and forth to the doctor and to the plastic surgeon, but things now are starting to heal and I feel really good. Um, it's not been anything like I had expected. I, I thought I would have a lot of pain, but as it turned out, I had absolutely no pain. I was very sore. I'm still sore, but not like I have been. Um, it's been incredible. You know, I just, all I can say is I just know the Lord touched me. And that's all I can attribute it to. Um, let me tell you my little journey about it. You know, I have expressed to you all how much I was trusting in the Lord and I had prayed for peace about it. And He had certainly given me peace. I never did get scared. I was not frightened. I wasn't worked up about it. I, I would be lying if I told you I didn't think about it, especially when I would lay down at night. I would think about what was facing me, but as far as being scared, I was never scared. And the morning of my surgery, uh, we live about, it's about 85 miles from the hospital. And so my daughter-in-law was, we were going that morning, I was driving and my paperwork had told me that my surgery was scheduled at nine and I had to be there at seven to be prepped and ready. Uh, well, let me back up a little bit. The night before, I had to bathe with this Hiva cleanse all over and then there were these um, wipes that I had to wipe certain sections of my body down with each wipe. And then you had to let that dry for two minutes. And then the next morning, I had to shower again with the Hiba cleanse. And then when I got to the hospital, I would have to wipe down with these wipes again, some more wipes they provided. So when I had met with the PACE nurse on Friday before my surgery the following Thursday, she had told me to be there at six. And I told her, I said, my paperwork says seven. And she said, well, uh, just to check with them to make double sure. So I had. I had called the doctor's office. I had checked with them. They had inquired to make sure about the um, surgery time and the time that I was to be there. And I was told to be there at seven, that I was scheduled to be operated on at nine. Well, about 6.30, as we're coming into Callahan, Florida, my phone rings and it's a lady from the Baptist Hospital uh, asking me <clears throat> if I was coming. I said, yes, ma'am, I'm on my way. And she said, well, how far out are you? I said, probably 30 minutes. And uh, she said, well, you're scheduled for 730. She was real short with me. And I said, well, I was told to be there at seven. This is at 630 and I would be arriving at seven. And she said, well, you're scheduled for 730. And that was the end of her conversation. So it kind of stressed me a little bit. I'm thinking, I told my daughter-in-law, I said, the paper plainly says seven o'clock. And they confirmed that when I had gone to the plastic surgeon's office. I hadn't called. I had gone to see him the day before surgery. <clears throat> they had checked on it. And Heather kept saying, you know, well, don't let it upset you. You know, you're, you're on time. You're going to be on time. So we get there at 7 o'clock. And buddy, you talking about rushing me through? But I mean, when I got there, they said, they're waiting on you. They rushed me into the holding area. They let my sister and Heather go in with me. Uh, I had to strip off and wipe down really fast with these wipes. I couldn't remember what section I was supposed to wipe what with, so I just wiped down, and I didn't even have time to let it dry. I had to get a hospital gown on. Uh, 
one of the nurses that was supposed to be taking care of me in the holding room, I heard her outside the curtain talking to a, a young man that put my IV in after they'd had this conversation. And she says to him, well, I'm not gonna get in any hurry. She hasn't been in any hurry. And I told my daughter-in-law, my sister, I said, they're talking about me. I said, I'm here on time, but you know, it was obvious they were kind of upset. And so when they came into the area there, uh, the, the young man, I, he, he's taken this blanket thing that's covered in full to put over me. And I said, I was told to be here at seven o'clock. And he said, oh, it's okay, no worries, no worries. You know, we're just here to, to get you all better and get everything done. And he slapped an IV in my arm. And then the anesthesiologist came in with her assistant and she spoke to me, I signed a paper, she looked inside my mouth, she went out, my surgeon came in, and I told her, actually, the guy was still in there doing the IV and the nurse was standing there that had made this crude remark. And I said to my doctor, I said, they're upset with me. Uh, and she said, I said, I, I was told to be here at seven. And she said, that's right, that's, that's what was on her paperwork it was seven o'clock and evidently she was never notified to be here earlier. And so anyway, the, the young guy got my IV hooked up and went out and the anesthesiologist then came in and did what I've already said. And, and then buddy, I'm telling you, they whisked me out. The, the uh, guy that did the IV gave me an injection of some sort of happy medicine. And the last thing I remember is just kind of making a curve outside of the holding area I was in. And the next thing I remember are three large lights that they were adjusting overhead that had like lots of small lights in it, halogen lights, but there were three big silver that held these lights and that was it. I said, well, you know, the Lord, I think done all that too because I had no time to think, no time to get anxious. The most anxious thing was getting through the traffic thinking I was gonna be late to get there. But buddy, it was wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And I mean, I was on my way. And the next thing I know, I'm in my room. They're bringing me into my room after surgery. Uh, I did get sick. I ate some jello and I can vaguely remember eating that. I couldn't remember where I was at when I ate it, but my sister told me, she said, you were in the room. And I ate that and drank something. And I, I said, I'm gonna be sick and I had to throw up and then I had to get up and go to the restroom. My daughter-in-law walked with me into the bathroom and I was so sick, man, I'm telling you, I sat on the toilet just throwing up. But other than that, it was nothing like I thought. I thank God for it. I thank Him for bringing me through it. I got the report this last Friday that the doctor, the surgeon called me and she said, you have all clear margins and your lymph node tested negative. I said, praise God, thank you, Jesus. He truly, he's the one that brought me through this. I had so many people praying for me. But anyway, I thank God for what He's done for me. And uh, I went back to the surgeon on Monday of this week and she told me that they're doing a study now where they take part of the breast tissue, if I would give them permission to take part of my breast tissue to study uh, it has something about the genes in it they can determine what your percentage rate of the possibility of reoccurrence of cancer would be and so i will see an oncologist this coming monday and um, this study report should be back to her by then and that's when a determination will be made as to whether or not i have to take any kind of treatment I'm trusting in God that I am not going to take any treatment. I think He has brought me through this and He, I believe, will bring me all the way that I don't have to have any type of treatments done.
So if you will, please continue to pray for me. Thank you for the prayers that you have lifted up on my behalf. I'm telling you, I, I have felt it. I have felt the presence of the Lord so strong. And I thank you. I love all of you. And when I get some more news, I will, I will give you an update on it. And by the way, uh, if you're hearing the crickets, I have my grand lizard here. His name, he's, a, he's a, a chameleon. I have been babysitting him for my youngest granddaughter. They went to the mountains and they're coming to pick him up today. And his name is Rango. So at the end of this clip, I'm going to show you a little video where he is actually catches his crickets with his long tongue. It's been very interesting having him here. So anyway, take care. I love you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.